Welcome to another episode of the Megan Spotlight series. Once again, we are delighted to have two guests joining us today from Hokkaido University in Japan, Professor Yokosawa from the Faculty of Health Sciences and Associate Professor Shirashi from the Pediatric Neurology Department, focusing on epilepsy. Good afternoon to you both. Let's start with Professor Yokosawa first. Um, what started your interest in MEG and how has its utilization evolved in your research? Okay. <clears throat> mm. uh, I graduated uh, Department of Physics. Uh, I was studying a uh, spin glass. Uh, it's a magnetic phenomenon found only at very low temperatures. So I used the liquid helium in my lab. So squid, superconducting interference device, a uh, perfect device to measure magnetism of spin glasses because it works in liquid head. So I was very familiar with squid since I was a master course student. Research of spin glasses are uh, interesting for me, but when I get a job after I graduate the master course, I wanted to research that would be more directly useful. Uh, fortunately, I got a job at Hitachi Limited uh, Central Research Laboratory because uh, there is a project to use squid to measure magnetic field generated from human organs, uh, brains or heart for clinical purpose. Then actually, I made magnet encephalography or magnet cardiography when I worked for Hitachi company. I left the company uh, eight, 18 years old, I, 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 sorry, 18 years ago, and moved to Hokkaido University, where uh, there are EMG devices. I switched from the side of making MET to the side of using MET. Uh, since I'm not a medical doctor, I have been doing research on cognitive and psychological topics, such as memory, uh, music cognition, and emo emotion or so on. Recently, I have been working on combining two images uh, to record the brain activity of two communicating people at the same time. So you are involved in work concentrating on MEG in the hyperscanning system, which enables, uh, yeah. natu which enables natural face-to-face -face communication. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. You, yes. Can you explain to our listeners um, a little bit more detail? Okay. Uh, it's a uh, relatively simple uh, system. Uh, as I mentioned, Hokkaido University has two MEG devices, one for clinical use and the other for research use. Uh, they are located 50 meters apart, uh, but close each other enough to directly connect it by high-speed optical fibers. We then connected them and provided a microphone, uh, loudspeakers, cameras, and projectors so that the two people can talk face-to-face -face manner under image recording. By sending one star trigger to both image devices, uh, two brain, uh, brain activities can be recorded simultaneously. The transmission delay of the sound and the image are very short so that the participant can have natural communication. In communication, eye contact is also important. Uh, so participants can gaze each other through half mirror systems. Uh, this kind of simultaneous recording of multiple brain activities uh, is so it's called hyperscanning, as you say. How and why is hyperscanning and MEG important to your brain studies in the future? What do you predict to be the impact of the results for you? The social interaction or communication is a foundation of human society. Uh, the brain functions that support this, therefore, uh, can be said to be the brain functions that allow us to be human beings. There have been many studies to clarify its uh, neural basis. However, in the traditional research, each subject watched a face image with expressions or played a game with a computer during the brain activity are recording. That was not actual interaction with others in real time. 
Uh, this is why hyperscanning has been conducted in these years. MEG hyperscanning is optimal because uh, temporal resolution is important in communication. Uh, in conversation, for example, the situation, situation is changing quickly, very quickly. When we communicate, we are aware of the presence of the others, predict their behaviors, and uh, keep thinking about how they might evaluate me. We have uh, others present in our brain. In, if others are not present in good manner in our brain, they may cause some disease. So identify the natural basis of the communication may be useful for clinical applications, not only for psychological or social science, I think. Thank you, Professor Yokosawa. Thank you very much. So, Professor Shirashi, let's move into the clinical utilization and discuss how MEG at Hokkaido University is uh, utilized in a clinical setting. Please explain um, to us how MEG is incorporated into the operational flow of the epileptology department. You know, how is MEG used in conjunction with other modalities and why is that vital for you and the patient? Okay, thank you very much. So the actually the Jap Japanese medical system is a little bit different from the other country. As you know, MEG is very successful in Japan, and uh, uh, we can use uh, all all about all kind of epilepsy patients currently because of the, our machine is very old, and uh, my university hospital cannot allow to uh, get the money more. So I can use uh, this MEMG machine easily. Uh, so we, uh, every week, we have a patient who would like to uh, uh, explain the, some uh, system of the epilepsy, and some, some patients need to, uh, preoperative evaluation. So the, we use the MEMG machine for every patient to do the initial initial examination to get uh, some information, how to get uh, uh, some opportunity to take uh, operation or not, or uh, to use uh, some diagnosed epilepsy syndrome, and uh, how to use, uh, use uh, uh, anti-epileptic drugs for kind of, such kind of patients. So the imaging machines now is uh, some common uh, tool to uh, exams the uh, epilepsy patient. Probably uh, that is why that uh, in Japan uh, the, the cost of the MEG uh, evaluation is uh, a little bit lower uh, than the another country. We, you, we, 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 patient would have to pay the less than one hundred dollars for each uh, examination in patient clinics. So the uh, actually the the MEG machine and the MEG examination sometimes very big information for us to treat the epilepsy patient. So can you give us an example of an epilepsy case where you've been involved with where the use of MEG has allowed improved clinical okay. outcomes? Okay, okay. So actually, uh, my machine is uh, born in the 1999, so the night of 20, 20 years old, more than 20 years old. Uh, we have a lot of uh, some examples to such kind of cases. One patient who uh, now is uh, probably 10 years ago, uh, he was a junior high school student, but he cannot, he couldn't uh, the commute uh, uh, school because of a lot of seizures. But uh, EEG cannot detect any spikes, but main scan can detect some uh, tiny spikes at the uh, Pre, uh, presenter of the IRS, and uh, we can, uh, he get, he underwent uh, some opera, uh, epilepsy surgery and removed the uh, seizures. Now the one, uh, he now is uh, under 30 years old. His uh, life has dramatically changed. He can uh, gra graduate some high school and get a job, and he now have uh, some uh, wife right, right now. Sometimes MEG can uh, clearly uh, finding to operation to some 
such kind of the patient who have a focal cortical dysplasia at the bottom of sarcasis. The image is very, image is very powerful to detect some uh, tiny region at the bottom of sarcasis or the, uh, in the sarcasis. EEG can, cannot detect such kind of spikes and the, uh, only EMG can detect such kind of spikes. So actually, EMG is very, very useful for such kind of patient. Thank you. That's, that's very in interesting. The adoption of MEG in epilepsy has been successful in Japan. Uh, and how and what should be done to keep the utilization active in, in Japan, do you think? Yeah, probably uh, every country has such kind of issue, but uh, it's it's very important issue is uh, uh, some cost of the liquid helium. Actually, the, my machine, my, our machine is uh, so connected to some recycle system so that uh, I we have not such much such, such not much uh, big trouble but uh, uh, another uh, site uh, image machine cannot maintain the uh, using the image machine because of the cost of the uh, high cost of the liquid headings and also the uh, the machine is a little bit uh, expensive to use uh, private hospital. So the, now is a, a Japan private hospital can get the image machine for the another purpose, such kind of the, some dementia and uh, uh, psychiatric issues. But the uh, government can, uh, actually the uh, government uh, cannot uh, use, uh, uh, cannot adopt, uh, accept the use of the, such kind of another purpose, uh, 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 except for the epilepsy patient. So the, we have to move on the government to you know, motivate the, the white, the usage of the imaging machine the, for the, uh, something kind of psychiatric patient or another kind of patient, neurological patient. Okay, thank you. So our last question to you both, um, uh, Professor Shirashi and Yokosawa, please. We are interested in learning more about the memory research you're conducting in the MEG lab. What aspect of um, memory are you researching and is MEG supporting this? Maybe Professor Yokosawa, you go first. Mm, okay. Mm, uh, yes, I have exper experience to study uh, memory topic. Mm. Uh, as we get older, our memory performance decline, even if we are not uh, dementia or other disease. Uh, so I have conducted a uh, study on the decline in memory performance by aging uh, with my students. Uh, I was actually I was shocked to find that my memory performance has already declined comparing to my students. But uh, anyway, uh, we found that brain activity uh, of a certain brain region decreases along with a uh, tendency of mild cognitive impairment and memory performance, even in healthy elderly people. Mm, then, so it is very strong point of MEG that we can track the brain activity over time. Uh, there are several types of memories. Uh, some memories decline with aging remarkably, but the other uh, memories keep well. Keeps well. Uh, we can examine both memories simultaneously Owing to the time resolution. It's very strong point, I think. Uh, as uh, Dr. Shiraishi said, uh, MEG can be used as a screen tool to bring health diagnosis, of course. Uh, but I believe that MEG is a powerful tool to search, researching the reason of the memory decline by aging and finding a method to slow down the decline. Professor Shiraishi, do you have any comments as well? Okay, so the as I said previously, so the now is that we are trying to research about the dementia or some mild cognitive impairment, something like a, a patient who who should be treated at drugs or some rehabilitation or another another tool. The MEG is probably a good tool to detect some change of the uh, oscillation of the brain or some uh, atypical 
uh, finding uh, through the brain activity. So the, now the currently Hokkaido University Hospital now would like to, uh, to motivate to, to uh, diagnose and treat the dementia patient. So the, we are now starting to, uh, to move on the uh, wide, wider the clinical purposes and uh, use the uh, main, main signals to detect some, some initial finding of the uh, dementia patients. So probably within the two years, the, such kind of activity probably wider and uh, we have to do the uh, lot, lot of work to do about the dementia on the mild cognitive impairment patient. Thank you. Um, thank you both for your time today. It's been really informative uh, for our audience and it's an honor for us to be able to share insights into MEG utilization at Hokkaido University and communicate this with the wider MEG audience globally. So thanks again for your support and for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.